an animation clip that can be used in an animated graphic novel, comic, or game sequence showing a fierce blonde female boxer character training in a strange temple gym with a cyberpunk flair. That was a spec. Here's how I made it. So choose a stable diffusion model that supports the goal you have for your character concept. I'm using Dream Shaper for mine. First we do some experimenting in Stable Diffusion to find the right combo of prompts and settings that satisfy the character concept. Be sure to save the prompt and settings for later when you do the final animation. We'll see that later in the tutorial. The concept you come up with dictates how you cast your virtual actor. In a film you'd cast a human actor that fits the concept. You could do that here too, but I think it's easier to find a 3D model that matches your concept instead and then modify it to taste and use it in a rough animation sequence that will drive the Stable Diffusion batch image to image animation. Start with a free basic 3D model that roughly matches the character concept you have in mind. You can find free 3D models many places online, Sketchfab, TurboSquid to name a couple. Gather free 3D assets to dress up your character and accessorize. Assemble the character in the 3D modeling software of your choice like Blender or 3ds Max. Rig the character using the free Mixamo or Real Illusion Actor Core rigging tool. Gather free animations that express the idea you have in mind for your shot. You can get free animations from Mixamo or Actor Core through Real Illusion, or you can find animation files from any other sources online. Bring all your collected animations and apply them to your character in your 3D creation app of choice. You can also do this in Unity or Unreal Game Engine. Create a very basic, fast render of your animation sequence for your character with an alpha channel. An ugly render is fine here, we're just looking to capture the general shapes, motions, and segments of the character. Making the animation pretty is what Stable Diffusion is for. Bring the animation into an app like After Effects and place a solid green color behind the character for keying later. Now on to creating the Laura file. At this point, gather the elements for your character concept. You can use any combination of any tools that work to create these elements. Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, some of the frames already generated in the 3D animation render you just did, or Photography. Feel free to modify and combine these elements with in-painting, out-painting, up photo-bashing, and or compositing with an editing tool like Photoshop, Photo-P, or GIMP. The goal for a LoRa model is to come up with maybe 20 images or so, close-ups, medium shots, and wide shots of your character, ideally in various lighting conditions from various angles. Once you have your training images for LoRa, you're ready to create the LoRa model. My suggestion is to watch this excellent tutorial by Olivio that covers how to create a LoRa model if you're not sure how to do this. Once you've created your LoRa model, we're ready to set up batch image to image in Stable Diffusion like so. Okay, so first of all, I'm using the Dream Shaper checkpoint. I'm in the image to image tab. I have a relatively straightforward prompt here. I have my LoRa tag. I drop the first frame from my rough render here into image to image. Note that I'm on the image to image tab, not batch. We're just doing a test right now. Here are the settings that I used. Crop and resize. Euler sampling method, sampling steps 25, width 768, height 512, CFG 7, denoising is 0.71. I have a particular seed that worked well for me when I was coming up with the concept. I'm restoring faces. Down here in control net, I'm only using one of the control nets even though I have three. I enable it. I drop in the same image that I dropped in above. This is the first frame of the render sequence. Processor is canny. Model is canny. Down here the weight is 0.65. The canvas height and canvas width match the same as the top. Just resize. And now we get into a script which I think helps with the denoising and consistency, but I'm not entirely sure. However, my results have been pretty good, so I've been using it. Image to image alternative test should be in here already. Grab that. It does require the Euler sampling method, so that's why we set this to Euler before. These are the settings that worked well. I got this tip from the Corridor crew. You can check out their stuff, they're very helpful. This is checked, randomness is on zero. This is unchecked, keep this at one. Set this to 25, which matches the 25 up here. Make sure that's on override. Uncheck this, make sure this is checked. Once you have all those settings, we're gonna go up to the top and run a test. And I'm pretty happy with this render. This is the concept that I was going for. Kind of cartoony, possibly comic book looking, and it matches the concept of my character that I built in Laura. So we're ready to go to batch the batch. Click on batch down here in control net. Make sure to take off your image because now we're going to be using multiple images through the batch. So you don't want to have just one image here. Make sure all the rest of the settings are correct. Make sure you have the source of your rough animation in your input directory. Make sure you have a path to the output directory and click generate. Sit back, get a cup of coffee and let your animation run. Okay, after it's done running, you'll have a series of images. 
and here are the ones that I created. They look pretty clean. You can see we got to do some cleanup, take out the green screen, fix the flicker. But other than that, they're pretty coherent. Okay, now we bring the images over into After Effects to test the render. There's definitely flickering. We definitely have to key it, but it looks pretty coherent. There isn't anything conspicuously wonky, at least at first glance. So I think we're ready to render this out and then bring it over to DaVinci. Okay, in DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to bring this video into the media pool. I'm not going to change the frame rate. I'm going to go to edit, drop into the timeline, take a look at it in here. And again, it's pretty flickery. We're going to go into fusion. I'm going to click the in, type the one key to put it up here. Two is the output here. Click on this again, control and space bar, type in auto, grab in the auto dirt removal and apply. Control space bar, the flicker, apply. Make sure this is selected as fluoro light. Let's play it again. It's not perfect, but it's getting better compared to the one on the left. There's definitely less flicker. We're going to go control C, control V to copy another one. Uh, go into here and drag this down a bit to make it more intense. Do another test. Looking better than it was originally. And so on. Now I notice with DaVinci, my computer hangs if I add more than two to flicker. So I'm going to render this out and bring it back in again. Back to Fusion. Click on the in. Control space bar. Add another to flicker. Make sure it's on fluoro. Give it a test. Well, it's not perfect, that looks pretty good. And once we composite it into our shot, any remaining flicker should not be that distracting. Okay, here we are in After Effects, and I've keyed out the footage with key light. So it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. There's a little motion blur, that's to be expected, but the flicker, I'd say, is mostly reduced. Uh, one more thing that we want to do is make sure that the composition settings shows the frame rate at 12. That helps with uh, some of the flicker as well. It makes it more cartoonish with the lower frame rate. So let's see what it looks like in a comp. So here's the final comp. So I added in some little comic tropes here, the font, the frames. Uh, I got an image in the back that I created in mid-journey and applied and applied a little motion to using Leia Pix. And uh, we have some sound effects as well and some classic comic effects. So that's pretty much it. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please do subscribe if you find this content valuable. Give us a like. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section and do hit the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when the next tutorial is available. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.